Hi friends, so we are starting a project next week that is going to look at the three regions of North Carolina. And so I wanted to touch on some information about each region a little bit today and we'll get into some more information tomorrow and on Monday before you start your project. But I wanted to give you a little bit of an overview. So there are three regions in North Carolina. There are the mountains, the Piedmont, the coastal plains, there's technically four, including the Tidewater, but in third grade, we are only going to focus on the mountains, the Piedmont, and the Coastal Plain. Next year, you'll start talking more about the Tidewater. So in the mountain region, it's located between the Piedmont and Tennessee. Tennessee is a state that borders North Carolina, and there are lots of mountains. It's part of the Smoky Mountains, which is in western Tennessee. It's part of the Blue Ridge. Um, Mount Mitchell is a part of the mountain region in North Carolina and it is the highest summit, the highest point in eastern North Carolina. The Black Mountains are also located in the mountainous region of North Carolina and they are very important to the ecosystem um, and just very well known. The soil type, it's rocky. There are lots of natural resources, minerals, and stones. The economy is a lot from tourism, mining, um, apples, and Christmas trees. All of your Christmas trees that you buy at Food Lion or you buy at tree lots down here, they all come from the mountains. Um, there are some major cities there, such as Asheville and Boone. And there is UNC, Asheville, Western Carolina, and Appalachian University. Um, some historical sites in the mountainous region of North Carolina um, include the Biltmore, which is the largest privately owned home in North Carolina. Some of you might have been there. The Blue Ridge Parkway, Cherokee Reservations. Um, the Blue Ridge or the mountainous region takes up about 10% of the state and is home to the Cherokee Indians, which um, they're part of the population and the mountainous region is the least populated region of North Carolina. Um, there's also an imaginary line that determines water flow. Um, east of the divide, it flows to the Atlantic Ocean, and west, it flows to the Gulf of Me Mexico, and that is in the mountainous region of North Carolina. Here are some pictures of the mountainous region of North Carolina. So here is the Biltmore that I was talking about. There's the Blue Ridge Mountains. Here is a map of where it is and some wildlife. Next, we have the Piedmont region. This is where we live. It's between the mountainous region and the fall line, um, which is the intercoastal plain. The Piedmont is considered the foothills of the mountains. Uh, there's rolling hills. Um, we don't have the mountains, but we have hills that we talked about when we were talking about landforms. There are lots of streams, not really rivers. There's more rivers in the mountains. There are hardwood forests, lumber, and livestock are some natural resources in the Piedmont. Our economy is mostly manufacturing from textiles, furniture, tobacco, um, banking in Charlotte. And then some cities, like I said, Charlotte, Winston-Salem, Raleigh, Greensboro, these are all cities in the Piedmont area. We have a, quite a few universities in the Piedmont, NC State, UNCC, UNC, Duke, uh, Wake Forest. Our soil type, which you can see out in your yard, is rich red clay or bricks. Some historical sites in the Piedmont include state museums in Raleigh, Old Salem, the North Carolina Zoo. Um, another, I mentioned that this is in between the fall line and the mountainous region, and the fall line is a drop-off point between the Piedmont and the intercoastal plain where you have waterfalls, okay. different, there's a difference in rocks and soils. Um, some fast facts about the Piedmont region. It takes up 45% of the state. And it's the most urban and populated. Um, and this is where we live. Here are some pictures of the Piedmont region of Charlotte, of some fields, where it is on the map, um, some wildlife. Finally, we have the intercoastal plain. This is between the fall line, the Piedmont, and the tidewater. Characteristics are sand hills. Um, this is where we go to the beach um, and hang out. The economy is tobacco, textiles, paper, agriculture, cotton, soybeans, peanuts. Some cities in the area are Greenville, Fayetteville, Rocky Mount, 
universities include ECU, UNC Pembroke. Um, the soil type here is very different, or the soil type in the intercoastal plain is very different from what it is here. Here we have that rich red clay, and there we have um, a lot more sand. Some historical sites include the Golf Hall of Fame. And um, some facts about this is the is about the same size as the Piedmont. There's lots of North, uh, North Carolina military bases. Here are a few images of where it is, kind of what it looks like, that Golf Hall of Fame. And then finally, I mentioned we do have the Tidewater, which is between the Intercoastal Plain and the Atlantic Ocean. This isn't one we're going to focus on a whole bunch in um, third grade, but just a few quick facts. It's about 20 to 30 miles inland from the Atlantic Ocean. There are lots of salt marshes, swamps, the Outer Banks are here, um, sound, beach, lots of natural lakes. Um, the economy, I mean, as you can imagine with it being a beach, it's a lot of tourism, a lot of people going and traveling there, fishing and recreation. Some cities include Wilmington, Moorhead City, New Bern, um, some universities, UNCW, uh, Elizabeth City State University. Um, again, it's very sandy. Some historical sites are the USS NC Battleship, Fort Fisher. Um, and some fun facts, it's about 30 feet above sea level. There are the barrier islands, which are islands that protect the mainland. Um, the Outer Banks are here, and it was first explored and colonized. It was the first part of North Carolina explored and colonized, and it had the second largest population and the mildest um, climate, which means there wasn't a lot of shift in the temperature and things like that. Here are some images from the Tidewater. And then just some effects of geography. So the Piedmont's rivers, such as Catawba, Yadkin, Petey, flow southeast, which discouraged settlers from moving west into the interior of North Carolina. And due to the Piedmont's clay and drier climate, um, farms were smaller, but streams and rivers helped build major industries. So a lot of farming doesn't take place necessarily in the Piedmont because of the clay. Um, cities develop where industries are, so that's why we have so many more cities in the Piedmont area. Um, heavily forested mountains were last to be settled by Europeans, and they are the least populated, so our mountainous region. And then there was a lot of early growth in the coastal cities, um, but there was a lack of natural harbors and wind shifted the barrier islands and it, it's quite shallow, um, but it, that's where a lot of our early growth was, was in those coastal cities. So that's, I know, that's a very quick run through of our three regions in North Carolina. We are going to slow down and take time to dig into this more um, this upcoming week.